My name is Cormac Brewers. Uh, I am currently Head of College at the National Maritime College of Ireland, a constituent college of Cork Institute of Technology, and a partnership with the Irish Naval Service based down in Ringeskiddy in Lower Cork Harbour. My own background is I grew up in the town of Cove, which is also in Cork Harbour, and um, from a very early age, uh, I just had a grow, a love for the sea. Um, I'm the son of a school teacher and a university lecturer, and for a long time, it was thought quite strange that, that, that somebody in our family would have an interest in the sea. But it turned out that when we went back and started looking, um, that in actual fact there were seafarers in my family if, if, you, if you looked back far enough. Um, I had a, a great granduncle who was um, an engineer with Cunard and had served, for example, on the RMS Mauritania. Anyway, I went to sea when I was, was 17 and I was at sea for about 12 years uh, in the Merchant Navy. I worked uh, a lot on supertankers during that time, but also on other kinds of general cargo vessels all over the world. And I think it's fair to say that they were very much formative years in, in, in terms of my life ever since then. Um, when I went to sea, the business of shipping and, and the profession of seafaring was changing a lot at that time. And I, I became involved, I guess, in one of the, the early waves of, of the rollout of information technology at sea. And I, I became very involved in IT and, and, and communications at sea. And that led me to come back to Cork in later years. And I, I did a degree in computer science in UCC. But I never lost my connection with the sea. And, and, and after spending some time in, in, in research, I found myself working for a navigation systems multinational, a company that basically installed maritime navigation systems all over the world. And I did that until I came back uh, to the National Maritime College of Ireland in 2012 and um, helped to formalize research activity in the college. And that's what I did up until I was appointed head of college uh, June 2018. Um, so growing up in Cove in the 1970s and 1980s was an interesting time. Um, unemployment was very, very high in the Cork area at that time. Um, major employers in the area were the Verome Cork Dockyard, Irish Steel, Fords, Dunlops, and many of these large employers um, went out of business um, during the time I was growing up. So really for, for young people in Cove at that time, your options were either to, to go and work abroad, um, or if you had an interest in the sea, you could either join the Irish Navy or you could actually go to sea in the Merchant Navy. And because I've never been that good at following rules, I decided to go to sea in the Merchant Navy. And uh, that's, that's what happened to me since. Seafaring is, a, is one of the oldest professions in the world and it's impossible to go to sea as, as a professional mariner and not feel a connection with you know, those who've gone before you. Um, there are many, many traditions that continue at sea, even in today's very high-tech modern world, where you know, they're really, a, 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 I suppose, a nod to the past, a recognition of, of where we have come from. And also a realization that the sea is, is a tough environment and, and even the best prepared ships crews can, can find themselves sometimes at the mercy of the elements. And I think there is a certain feeling of, 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 of perhaps belonging to, to know that you're part of a tradition and others have gone before you and got through it safely and so on. Um, one of the traditions I always liked when I was at sea was um, how ships mark armistice, the, the, the day that the, 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 the First World War ended, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. And many, many ships around the world to this day continue to mark that by basically pausing on their, their sea voyage. They will basically pull the engines back to, 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 to all stop. And the vessel basically will, will mark a few minutes silence to, to sort of acknowledge all of those seafarers around the world who lost their lives in all wars. Um, you know, trying to keep supply chains open, trying to keep food flowing to, into a, and out of various countries and so on. And an interesting piece of that in an Irish context, of course, is um, the Infomar 
Irish seabed survey that has been going on now for a number of years, very, very successfully, a, a partnership between the Marine Institute and the Geological Survey of Ireland. The number of wrecks that they have mapped around the Irish coast runs into the thousands. Uh, and this is an extraordinary history, an extraordinary story of Irish seafaring, of international seafaring, but also of you know, the, the, the true price of war. Um, and, and you know we have all of these wrecks around our coast, some of them very, very well known, like the RMS Lusitania, which of course sank not far from here, um, off the old head of Kinsale, but also so many other wrecks around the Irish coast who have their, you know, their, 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 their stories wrapped up in, 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 in our small part, if you will, in, 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 in global conflicts like the First and Second World Wars. So modern ships you know, are very, very high-tech entities. If you take the latest generation of gas-carrying ships, for example, gas, gas tankers, gas ships, you know, they are as sophisticated as an Airbus A380 aircraft, hugely complex machines that require huge professionalism and, 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 and deep experiential and, and, and detailed knowledge from the crews who, who, who work those ships. However, it's always interesting to note that even on these most modern of ships, there are still seafaring techniques that have been in use largely unchanged for many, many hundreds of years. For example, how we moor, how we tie up ships. That technology hasn't really changed because the systems that we have, the use of, of mooring ropes, and there's all kinds of different types of mooring ropes and the way those ropes are laid out to secure a vessel. We have bow lines and stern lines and fore and aft springs and breast lines and so on. The reason we still use those today is because they remain the most effective method for securely tying a vessel up ashore. And though a lot of engineering expertise has been applied to try and come up with better ways to do it, this still remains the best way. Similarly, anchoring, while there has been some technological development, particularly in the last century as vessels have got much, much bigger, the basic principles of anchoring and you know, largely the design of anchors haven't changed that much in the last hundred years anyway. So there are still things that go on out at sea, which you know you can trace the 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 the, the ancestry of them, if you will, back over many 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 generations. Um, the fondness seafarers have for flags and the respect they pay to flags and to flying flags is is something that you find on ships, and, and also even as far as the fact that even the most modern of seafarers tend to still be a little bit superstitious. There are certain things they don't like to be done on ships and so on. Um, and that maybe, I suppose, is perhaps a, an unconscious nod to the fact that even um, in today's world, out at sea, you are not always completely in control because the environment is so extraordinarily powerful out there that, you know, to some extent you are at the mercy of the elements and it will always be like that at sea. And I think that engenders a certain respect um, in, in the seafarer that lasts even to this day. Seafarers, of course, you know, when navigating in coastal areas, and, and the Irish coast is particularly challenging in that regard, we, we have particularly rough seas at certain times around our coast. Visibility can be a serious challenge around the Irish coast. The importance of our aids to navigation, particularly our lighthouses, um, you know, is, is, is a huge part of, of, of safe and effective navigation and seafaring. And of course, there is also great traditions, a great love, I think, um, among all seafaring peoples, which includes the Irish, um, for our lighthouses. I mean, you know, people think about great lighthouses like the Kish in Dublin, like, like Tusker Rock, like the Fastnet Rock, of course. You know, these are, uh, they, they invoke very sort of romantic feelings about the sea and so on, but they form, they, 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 they serve a very, very important purpose even today in the high-tech world we live in. Lighthouses, of course, are some of the oldest navigation aids in, in, in the history of navigation. They would originally have been fires lit on the coast to warn vessels of, of, of dangerous rocks or headlands and so on. And indeed, one of the oldest lighthouses in the world is located in, in Hookhead in, in, in County Waterford. Um, I believe it dates back to the 11th or 12th century. So, you know, lighthouses, um, navigation aids, navigation lights, and, and, and the green for starboard, the red for port, and the one or two masthead lights, depending on how long your ship is, 
Um, these are, 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 are lights that have been in use for a long, long time. And over time, the, the, the lights have changed a little in their meaning and so on. But the, the, the idea of, of, of navigation lights determining, you know, what way you're looking at a vessel and so on, that is a, 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 a seafaring method that has been around for many, many hundreds of years. It is interesting that one of the things, for example, that aviation has taken from, from the maritime sector is if you look at a modern aircraft, it also has red and green lights on the wingtips and indeed white flashing lights above and below, which help a pilot to determine what way an oncoming aircraft is facing. And it's exactly the same idea as is done on ships. We're living in a time of great change in the maritime world. Technology, of course, is playing a huge role in, in changing how many, many things are being done. Um, it is interesting just talking to people, will we have lighthouses 20 or 30 or 40 years from now? That's not entirely clear at this point. Um, there is great talk across the, 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 the shipping industry at the moment about ships that don't have crews on them, unmanned vessels as they are known. I'm not convinced that's going to happen except in specialist cases. However, there's no doubt there's a lot of work being done at this and some people believe it is a direction that at least parts of the industry will take into the future. Um, I certainly think the role of seafarers, the role of those who work with ships and who work in ports etc will change will continue to change however i'd like to think that perhaps even a hundred years from now we will still have seafarers we will still have people who go to sea on ships and in fact in an irish context i think we may in as soon as 10 years have more people working at sea from ireland than ever before in our history because of developments in, in offshore renewable energy, which I think is going to play an increasingly important role in Ireland's future energy mix and, and in dealing with climate change and so on. But also because we have more and more scientists going to sea, we have more people involved in, in, in aquaculture, and more people are going to sea for leisure, for enjoyment. And that is something that we should encourage. There is a marvelous book by, by Conor O'Brien written um, back in the 19, early 1920s, I believe, um, called From Three Yachts, which is his story of just cruising around the Irish coastline. And it's an extraordinary book even today. It provokes the most extraordinary um, um, you know, wonder about the beauty that is the Irish coastline, particularly the southwest, west and northwest coasts of Ireland. We have an extraordinary, an extraordinary resource on our doorstep. And I think every Irish person should be fully aware of it, should be fully aware that they're islanders and, and should go out there and enjoy it. This is what's known as a compass binnacle. Um, every vessel that goes to sea, no matter how small or how big, carries at least one compass. This is a magnetic compass. And every vessel over a certain size that goes to sea is still required under international law to carry a magnetic compass. Why? Because when all else fails, this will get you home. It tells you which way you're pointing, which particularly when you're at sea and you cannot see any land, is rather important even today. So people sometimes ask, with all of this new technology, we have you know, global navigation satellite systems, we have all kinds of fancy ways of determining where we are. All of that, however, is dependent on technology which can break down. Um, people tend to forget today how complex modern technology is and satellite navigation systems are particularly complicated and while they have been extraordinarily reliable, there's always the possibility of failure for one reason or another. So it is very, very important to have backups and that is why even to this day we continue to see things like this on ships and I don't think that will change into the future. A compass is, is, is a wonderfully simple but an extraordinarily effective tool and one that I certainly think very few seafarers would be happy uh, to see disappearing off ships at any time in the future.